So today we we're going to continue uh, our discussion on um, concentration inequalities. Um, as I said previously, they're very useful in going from uncertainty to near certainty. So they help us uh, uh, on the one hand work with uh, a branch of algorithms that is called random that are called random algorithms. It also help help us uh, um, estimate and understand and control and understand how machine learning models will behave uh, on uh, new data, how how they will generalize. So all of these techniques are very important to understand, and I'll. As we go through them, I will make the connection. Uh, uh, and today we're going to talk about the specific one, the Chebyshev inequality. Um, and we are building off uh, our uh, previous discussion on the Markov inequality. So just to remind us, uh, the Markov inequality is um, uh, applies when the random variable is um, um, positive and given uh, some number that is positive again, then the probability of the random variable being bigger than the, the that, that number is the expectation over the that number. Okay, we we talked about it. Um, we talked about it. Uh, uh, in one of our previous meetings. Um, okay. So, so um, what, is, what is the Chebyshev inequality? It's just a, an application of the Markov inequality to the variable x minus the average. So, if we take the absolute value of uh, the variable that we started with, minus uh, the average. And now we're not assuming anything about the random variable, anything in the sense that uh, we're not assuming that it's positive. But because we're taking the absolute value, this is positive. So um, we're asking what's the probability of uh, uh, the random variable being far away from the average, more than some number. And um, this is this is exactly the same as the probability that the square is greater than the square of a. Um, if you're not certain why this is correct, think about it a bit. <laughs> and then um, a but but now now this variable on the left is is a positive variable. And because a was positive, a squared is positive. So now uh, the Markov inequality applies. So this is less than the average of this random variable over a squared. But um, the average of the distance of the variable from the average is the variance. So this is equal to the variance. That's the, actually the definition of the variance over a squared. So that, that's the Chebyshev inequality. So the Chebyshev inequality tells, uh, tells us um, what's the probability of the variable, again, a concentration inequality of the variable being far away from the average. We are, we are bounding it using the variance. Now, in cases where our samples are uh, grows, becomes bigger and bigger, we expect the, the variance of variables to become smaller and smaller. So that way, we, we are going to get better and better bounds on the, um, on the desired 
distance, that's how we transfer from uncertainty to certainty. Um, we're getting better and better bounds um, because we are, are taking samples that are great of greater and greater size. And we want to be able to quantify that process. So here on the right, I'm giving an example. So you can see how I connect the size of the sample and how well the bound is on the probability of um, the random process not representing um, uh, the average, the, the, the absolute average. Okay, so assume we have um, um, n um, random variables that are independent, and each one of them, it's like a flip of a coin with probability p, we get one side, with probability 1 minus p, we get another side. So, so that's our assumption, and we look at uh, the random variable, which is the average. So. We are interested in the average and variance of this, this random variable. And we want, we see that uh, um, N here uh, comes to play and we wanna see how we utilize it to get the concentration uh, that we desire for bigger and bigger samples. So that's what we wanna see in, in an example, in a quantitative example. So, so the average of the random variable is just p, because uh, when we say that um, one side we call it one, the other side we call it zero. So with probability p we get one, with probability one minus p we get zero, so the average is p. Um, and the variance, the variance is uh, always, so this is one, definition of the variance, but if you, um, you can see that this is also an equivalent definition. Um, just um, <clears throat> if you, if you um, expand this using the, the fact that the average is a linear, um, functional, you will get this. So, so the variance is uh, uh, the average of uh, xi squared minus x, the average of xi, all of that squared. Now, the average of xi is p, so here you get um, a p squared. But the average of uh, xi squared is one squared times p, zero squared times one minus p. So that's p. So you get that this is p times one minus p. Um, okay, let me stop here for a minute. Any questions or comments up to now? Is the calculation clear up to now? So, so the average of the variable that is uh, the average of the Bernoulli variables, the average of x, because uh, average is a linear functional, it's uh, one over n times n times the average of any one of them, which is the same. So you just, um, if you take the average of all of this, one over n goes out. Uh, and then because it's linear, the average uh, sign goes in and it's n times one of, because if the average of each xi is p. So it's n times p. So n over n is one, so it's p. And the variance, the variance behaves slightly different. 
because it's so the variance uh, squares the constant, so you get a, a square of the constant. And then uh, because it's independent, um, you get n times the variance of xi, but n over one, n over n square is one over n, and uh, times the variance, which is we calculated it here, it's p times one minus p. So this is the variance, and that's the crucial point here. So you see the variance of the variable becomes smaller and smaller as the sample becomes bigger and bigger. It's it's more the it's more concentrated. So so the average is is uh, um, the average of x. Um, you, you, the variance is, is the average distance of the from the average that becomes more and more concentrated. It goes to to zero as n goes to infinity, as the sample grows. Now we want to formalize using the Chebyshev inequality. We want to formalize how big n needs to be so that this probability is going to be very small. OK? So, um, So imagine that A is a small number and we're asking ourselves, um, the, the, the question that we want to answer is how big N should be, the sample should be, so that this probability is going to be small. Small, uh, this is our epsilon here. So from the Chebyshev inequality, this is less than an, or equal to the variance over a square, but the variance we just calculated is this. So we get we get that it's equal to this. P times one minus P over N times A square. So this is what we wanted. We wanted the size to, to occur here. Now this is this is the crucial interesting step. So we say, okay, we want we want epsilon to be small. Think about it one as one over a hundred or one over a thousand, whatever you want to choose. Now you can say, okay, this is my condition. I want epsilon to be bigger than this, which is going to be bigger than the probability. So we, we are bounding the probability of the undesired event where the average is going to be far from the real average, the empirical average, will be far from the real average, average by, by more than an A. So we, we get this condition here. And now if we, we, we just rearrange it a bit, we see that N needs to be bigger than that. That's the crucial thing. So we can actually say how big N should be in order for the, to control the probability of the undesired event, which is uh, the empirical average being far away from the real average in to a certain extent. And that's what we want. That's the type of process that we want in order to control the behavior of algor random algorithms or, or in order to be able to um, generalize how um, how machine learning models will behave. Um, so question or comments about this? Is this intended to be used to adjust the weights and the nodes, Aton? Is that where you're leading with this? To adjust the weights? For training, yep. Ah, the weights. Um, no, it's more, it's more to do with uh, things like how big the test set should be. 
Okay. Okay. Um, so um, we will see that there's connections between um, um, the the number of weights and the um, um, how much data you need in order to train well. Yeah, you're okay. just trying to get to an adequate sample size, right? Yeah. So 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 there's two two aspects to your question. So the the number of weights um, has to do intuitively with how complex the model is. Okay. Now the more complex the model is, and that's very intuitive um, at this point. The bigger the sample needs to be for training and for testing. Okay. So the, there's an interrelation between uh, the there's there's a there's a, a there's a price you pay for models that are more complex. Intuitively now, just think about it as having more weights uh, in the size of the data that you need to to play with, to train the model and test it. And um, with this type of tools, we are getting closer to being being able to quantify this relation and not just say it intuitively. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. And um, th th basically, this is the crucial step here. Okay. So I'm I'm able to say I want it to be that precise. That's the epsilon one over one over hundred. And then I get how big it needs to be. That that's the crucial crucial step you need to, to understand. And the reason we're getting this is because the variance is dependent on the size of the sample. The bigger the sample, the smaller the variance. So everything is intuitive, but now it's quantified. That's the difference. Other uh, questions or comments? What what is the um in the final answer there? It says p, and then brackets, and then some value minus p. What that's not n though. What what is that? No one one one. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that, okay. yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> it's here. Here it's better. You see. Yep. Now I got it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Other uh, questions or comments? Okay. Okay. So thank you very much for joining, and we'll continue later on. Thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye.